My name is Tom Miles. I am the Executive Director of the U.S. Biochar Initiative. Josiah Hunt of Pacific Biochar and I were leads for our working group on centralized biochar facilities at the Biomass to Biochar Maximizing the Carbon Value workshop. We've been asked how our group would scale up the biochar industry with centralized biochar facilities. We consider centralized facilities to be those which can process 150,000 tons or more of biomass per year and produce 50,000 tons of biochar along with heat, power, or other carbon co-products. The current biochar industry has many small producers, but only a few centralized facilities of this size. Centralized facilities are needed to process the large quantities of forest, urban, agricultural, and waste biomass materials available to supply large-scale soil improvement and remediation projects, and to supply the large demand for carbon sequestration and reduction. Our approach to develop large-scale production over the next three to five years would be threefold. One, we would develop biochar protocols to access large carbon markets. Centralized facilities need obligated carbon markets and subsidies to pay for the large capital costs of industrial plants. Two, we would expand existing biochar markets. Markets require large production of biochars of consistent quality, more than most producers can supply today. Three, we would modify existing biomass power plants to recover biochar from their thermal processes or to add biochar production capacity. This approach would create markets and funding for new biochar facilities in the future. The bioeconomy products that they would produce would create jobs and improve rural investment and employment. If we could produce 1 million tons of biochar from 3 million tons of biomass in centralized facilities, then we could sequester 2.5 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent and further reduce carbon dioxide emission, emissions by offsetting fossil fuels. We could improve more than 100,000 acres of land by increasing soil carbon 1%, which would have significant impacts on water retention, water quality, and crop productivity. And we could improve rural health by substantially reducing particulate emissions from wildfires and open burning. Biochar production is dispersed. There are many small producers and a few large producers. Producers are found in most regions of the U.S. with high concentrations in the West. There is unmet demand in the Midwest and Northeast. Some biochars are transported across the country in raw and modified forms. Our first task would be to develop a biochar carbon protocol so producers could access large carbon markets. Carbon markets now are small and voluntary. Large consumers require markets such as VERA, PCS, American Carbon Registry, or Gold Standard, which have protocols approved by the International Carbon Reduction and Offset Alliance, or ECORA. From 2006 to 2014, the International Biochar Initiative develop standards, a certification process, and a carbon protocol for biochar. At the time, it was not accepted by ECORA-approved markets. Since then, science has confirmed the validity of the IBI approach. IBI and the USBI, the U.S. Biochar Initiative are collaborating with others to modify the protocol so that it will be accepted by ECORA and the major carbon markets. We are told that development of a protocol for one of the three organizations will take approximately one year and a budget of $200,000. We estimate an annual cost of $150,000 per year to work through protocols for other markets. Market prospects are significant. For example, 37 million tons of CO2 equivalent per year is the current demand for carbon credits in the markets created by the California cap and trade and low carbon fuel standards. That would require 15 million tons of biochar from 45 million tons of biomass. It would also produce 17 gigawatt hours of electricity, which could be sold as transportation fuel. Our second task would be to expand existing markets. Current markets are largely for soil improvement, remediation, or water quality. These markets require large volumes of low-cost biochars, which can be made in centralized facilities. Reduction of waste, such as hazardous forest fuels, urban wood, manures, and biosolids also present large-scale opportunities. Part of the market development would be to create financing pathways, such as subsidies, similar to the guaranteed power rates, which helped build the California biomass energy industry. Our surveys have shown that a first step in this process would be to create a U.S. biochar industry association with grades and standards for biochar products. 
Centralized production would enable the large-scale strategic use of biochar for soil amendment, such as in this California vineyard. Large-scale biochar production in centralized facilities would enable management of food and other waste through co-composting in many private and municipal facilities. These uses are currently limited by the high cost and low volume of biochars available. Forests can be thinned to reduce the risk of wildfire. Residues can be chipped or milled for conversion to biochar in centralized facilities. Wildfire risk is high and has been increasing as shown in these graphics from insurance data. Reduction of hazardous forest residues provides resources for making biochars and co-products in centralized facilities. Large quantities of agricultural residues, like this wood from orchard replacement, are open burned. This material should be converted to biochar in centralized facilities. The third task would be to modify existing biomass facilities to recover carbon that is currently unused and landfilled. Many of the 178 biomass power plants in the U.S. could be modified to recover biochars. Others could add equipment to produce biochar while using the excess heat to generate power for heat or processing. Wood pellet mills, compost facilities with woody waste, and agricultural processing facilities can also be adapted to make biochars from residues. Biochars are made in centralized facilities from residues at ethanol plants, from manures, and from biosolids from wastewater treatment. This biomass power plant has been modified to recover biochar after converting wood residues, including hazardous forest fuels, to power. Dryers and kilns can be added to existing facilities to make biochar from residues while using existing equipment for biomass handling. This rotary kiln processes 20,000 tons of crop residues per year to make biochar-based fertilizers. The biochar industry has been slowly building for the last 15 years. We could scale the biochar industry in a three to five year period with investment in each of the three areas described. We estimate costs of one to one and a half million dollars per year to accomplish all the tasks we have outlined, beginning with $200,000 to develop the critically important carbon protocol. Our total estimated budget for a five-year program is $5.25 million. Each of the plants would cost $500,000 to three and a half million dollars to modify. Additional capacity at each plant would cost five to $10 million. These efforts should provide the basis for new plants to be planned and built. Each, which could each process 500,000 tons of biomass per year for investments of about $50 million. We would like to thank the participants in our working group. Further information can be obtained at the website of the Biomass to Biochar Maximizing the Carbon Value website. Thank you.